Hey boys, welcome back to the ARPG Corner. So today we've got the big one, the big update that we were kind of half dreading and half expecting to come, the one that breaks Bleeding Edge, or unbreaks it as it were, and the one that sort of takes away a few of the exploits that people were using to make the very end game far far easier than the developers I suppose intended. So we're gonna take a quick look through the patch notes today, just kind of talk through what this might imply for us going forward and where our characters are at as we stand. So the 1.0.6 seems to have just been a hot fix to help a game-breaking event at the beginning of Chapter 3. I ran into a few of these myself when playing through the campaign with my various characters, so it's good to hear that they're getting onto that. So it seems like that they've fixed one of the big gold and primordial affinity exploits, and they've restored those to a normal value, so that is good. Uh, it's now impossible to put a unique item into the Transmutation Forge or Dark Market Item Upgrade projects. Now, this is one of the reasons I didn't speak about this. I knew it would get fixed very, very quickly. So you could have actually put uniques into the Transmutation Forge and turned them into legendaries, thus giving them a bunch of new affixes and just utterly, completely annihilating the game. While it's a cool mechanic, it didn't seem to be intentional, so it's good that they've hammered down on that. Uh, issues when going offline and online. Cosmetics, ability to unstack items. Um, I'm hoping that's some of the usability stuff with right click not actually working when you're trying to sell items. A few network sync related bugs, including Force Shield. Uh, a few more bugs with personal stash and merchants. Da -de -da -de -da. And a few issues with matchmaking. So, a few that I ran into trying to play with my friends, the bug leading to an infinite black screen was very, very annoying. So, I'm glad that they've sorted that out. A few more issues in Act 3, which is great. Yes, I believe I ran into, ran into this one myself. It was a big pain in the ass. Big, big pain in the ass. Ran into it about three separate times. Uh, active skills. Alright, here's the one that really sucks. So they've nerfed crit damage a lot. And as you know, uh, all the builds that I've covered thus far have really heavily relied on crit damage. So we have to look at other ways to spec or maybe just deal with the crit damage nerfs and push forward. So minor crit damage modifiers for spells reduced from 30 to 25. Medium crit damage modifiers for spells reduced from 40 to 35. Uh, fixed some juggernaut issue. Fixed the sovereign Shout issue, uh, preventing players to apply weakness stacks when using the Dawnbreaker modifier. Winter's Grasp now doesn't gain cooldown reduction per level, so I guess to the guys who are breaking that, I'm sorry. Bulwark of Dawn, Sacred Grounds now only ticks two times per second instead of three. And here are the ones that really hurt us. Those of you who have followed my Immortal Warrior King builds know that this completely annihilates us much as we expected, right? So Flight of Gavineer fixed an issue that causes the crit chance from block chance of Standing Boulder to be way higher than expected. I mean, the, the nerf itself was expected. I was saying this from the very beginning, that there's no way they intended for that hammer to be that amazing. Um, it was good while it lasted, you know, we had our Thor. Thor moment, but uh, it's over now. So Bleeding Edge, now this one has really, really copped it. This has been nerfed into the ground. They've added an actual cooldown, a 10 second cooldown to the skill. Fix the damage gain per level from one to zero. Increase the damage reduction from minus 100% to minus 150%. Reduce the damage multiplier per ailment stack from 20% to 2%, which just means the ailment build is just, it's done, it's, it's over. The glory days are gone, there's no more annihilating bosses, and after we go over this, I'll show you guys some footage where the so-called Immortal Warrior King is now attempting to do a level 150-something uh, expedition, and you can see how well that's going for me. So one thing they've done is buffed summons a lot. Uh, from what I tried, they really sucked, so it's it maybe a summoner build is viable now. It might be something worth looking into, right? So we've got the damage of the summons greatly increased in the first 15 levels up to 100%. Increased summon damage during the first 40 levels by around 20%. Summons damage from level 40 to level 90 are also increased from 20% to 200%. Uh, health curve improve. And the AI to hopefully help them actually kill things. And a few other things. Uh, Liver Mortis, Immortal Moor's base health multiplier reduced by 30%. Feeding the Swarm base health multiplier by summons has been increased by 
base health multiplier for hunting swarm has been increased by 100% and then a bunch of stuff for parasite as well which might be worth looking into. So a couple of things in gate of fates as well. Uh, Armsmeister virtuoso stance and probing weakness stances now give minus 25% to all res instead of zero which kind of sucks for us. The crit damage bonus has been reduced on many nodes. Now this breaks every single build I've ever made in this game, so that, that really sucks, but here we are. From 20% to 15, 14 to 10, and 10 to 5. A futile endeavor now increases block efficiency from 14 to 20. Hurrah. <laughs> Here's the big one, the, the one that really, really hurts. You know, not that the other ones have hurt or anything. Merciless Lethality critical damage modifier is reduced from 100% to 60%. That sucks. Fixed an issue causing the Toxic Emanations passive node to stop working after teleporting. A few other things. Faith Leech. Uh, computational things with a bunch of other ones. And yeah, that's that. Uh, it looks like they've removed the noxious swarm wings, which, you know, we had issues killing because we couldn't actually click on the things, right? The hitbox problems. Uh, wealth Omens now give one stack of gold per hit instead of three, which I, I guess, you know, uh, I guess they're hoping that people don't break the currency of the, the story mode by running into those. A uh, few enemies now correctly affected by pull effects. Chapter 3 boss, now this is something a lot of you guys might be interested in. I know with some of the suboptimal or aka now regular builds that you have to endure in the main campaign, the Chapter 3 boss was a bit of a pain. So reduce the range of the lightning ball by 20%, reduce the range of orbs by 15%, increase the visibility of the visual effect warning about the activation of an orb. Chapter 1 boss, leap speed has been reduced. I think by Chapter 1 boss, do they mean... Do they mean the... Is that Edric, or is it the fire? What, whatever, whatever. Uh, leap speed has been reduced. Improved the leap indicator. It is now more visible and more accurate. And fixed an issue causing the chapter 3 final boss to stay invulnerable and freeze when he should die, which is always good. We were so locked out of so many uh, progression keys in the campaign that it just became a pain having to replay everything again and again. So a few endgame modifiers for you high level guys. Reduce the productivity multiplier from expedition levels by 50%. It's now impossible to try to increase the quality of an item that quality is already maxed out, which is nice, you don't waste money. Reduce primordial affinity prices for uber bosses, fantastic. Fix an issue causing loot level to be lower than expected during expeditions. I mean, it's always been super low during expeditions, I don't really know what it's upgrading to. You just barely ever get legendaries anyway, it doesn't matter what MF you have. Fix the bug causing the productivity multiplier to be ignored when finishing an endgame expedition. That one's helped me a lot. I've already tried it a few times at level 103, which is all I can clear now with my crappy builds. Uh, fix the bug preventing the productivity gain summary to refresh between endgame expeditions. And remove the possibility to send stacks of items to endgame projects requiring items to complete a few itemization issues. Fix some low tier of magic effects on armor being able to drop on chests at a higher level where they shouldn't. That's kind of nice, I guess. Uh, and tier 1 to tier 12 modifiers for accessories now have a critical damage value reduction again, because we can't have crit damage, that would be mean. Uh, a few fixes to the audio, which I guess I didn't really notice that they were required, but you know, so be it. Uh, a couple of things here and there, mixing issues, few sound effects redone, I'm sure they're all things you will notice yourselves. And that about wraps up the blind share of it. So, you know, it's it's over. The Golden Age, no more breaking the end game. Um, I would hope that they take a look at the viable builds for the game as it relates to the end game and, and allow us to actually create more viable builds. I tried to switch to Infinity Blades after this massive nerf and they kind of suck. Uh, they, they're really awkward to play after what we had uh, with Bleeding Edge and Bladestorm. It, really it's not not thrilling comparatively but you know i'm sure they'll keep rebalancing i'm sure they'll buff things up put things down and make the end game a little bit more viable i'm looking forward to seeing what the next broken thing is that we can achieve if there in fact is anything that can handle the end game easily i know i tried to do the level 150 stuff which i'll have on the screen right now with the the old build and uh it was it was a bit struggle towny you know the the level bosses have a bit too high of a health pool the mobs aren't too bad, but yeah, it's just, it's a bit spiky and a bit uneven in terms of the difficulty of the content that you encounter. So, 
Anyway, we'll keep you guys apprised as things, you know, develop in the Walson sphere. If you're interested in more build videos, more news, make sure to smash subscribe and like. If you don't like the content, smash the dislike twice. And until next time, enjoy this footage of me being annihilated. See you. Take that. more power. I can't carry that. <laughs> <laughs> 